Lots of argument about this one. Uh, ever wondered about the actual physics of the impossible turn? Well, welcome to Backyard Flight Test. Today, we're gonna explore this issue from that standpoint. So stick with me on flower. Hi, I'm Scott Purdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to explore the potential and kinetic energy as uh, they relate to an airplane taking off and climbing. The phase of, this phase of flight is a very low energy state and a very risky time flying piston engine airplanes. Failures do happen. How do we mitigate the inherent risk here, either in how we fly or how we train for it? I'm not talking about maintenance. It's just, uh, in a way, it, sometimes it's a gamble. It is a risk in a single engine airplane. Um, a couple of things before we start, though. I want you all to think about this maneuver deeply and plan for it on the ground and then train for the elements of the maneuver if you decide to do it. Um, don't wait until it happens to you to figure, say, okay, I'm going to do it now. If it can happen to any one of us at any time uh, that are flying single engine airplanes, it's happened to me. So trust me, you don't have time to think about it when the fan stops making noise. So the governing equation here is this one. It's uh, energy total is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. I've worked up solutions to the experiment, uh, to this, for this experiment before I flew it. I ran the equations from a conservation of energy stamp perspective. I think that's how most of us think. Um, there aren't any really ready-made uh, equations that you can pull from a textbook to figure this all out. So I ignored the various forms of non-conservative forces uh, acting in flight, you know, like drag, uh, to produce the results in my table, okay? It's just a, it's a, uh, a start, all right? With the high-profile cardinal turnback accident recently, I wanted to take a deeper dive into the physics of this situation, and arguably, <clears throat> I would say arguably during the takeoff phase, the airplane starts at its lowest energy state and then goes from there. With the low energy comes vulnerability and exposure to risk is much higher, uh, exactly because the airplane is less maneuverable. You have less options. We'll talk about options again here in a second. Powered airplanes without power are poor aerodynamic uh, gliders. I mean, face it. Energy loss to various uh, forms of drag is a real problem as well. The pro pilot operating handbooks usually don't have these kinds of numbers. They'll have best glide generally, but uh, other than that, it's pretty sketch. Energy loss is what we are looking for here in the results of today's flight test. You can build a, a more accurate equation, but you've got to have empirical data to validate your solution. In fact, that's why we do the flight test, to test the theory and refine our understanding, even over our equations. And frankly, that's the essence of science, a repeatable truth. Imagine that. So what I did was is I set up my test profile to cover the take off and turn back, as well as various climb speeds. The results were exciting, I think, and uh, I think it's cool. And I'm going to make a couple of videos on to, with them, with the results. But today, we're only going to look at VX, VY, and V cruise climb. Some POHs have it, some don't. Most don't. And how much energy each has at, an, at the engine cut. I'm going to do these takeoffs and turn backs over an airport but not close to the ground. That's in case my engine quits and I can't get it restarted. Um, so I'll have some place to go and land, hopefully reuse the airplane. <laughs> I, did that in a, I did that close to the ground in a previous vi video and I was religious about hitting 45 degrees of bank and maintaining it that way and flying right on the edge of the stall, hitting all the numbers to explore the turn back. And I did it really close to, as I said, really close to the ground. It's a risky maneuver. And I don't think I need to collect that kind of data all over again. I still have the film, after all. <clears throat> Today is a little different. I'm going to start overhead the uh, field, roughly about 2,000 feet AGL, configured 73 knots, which is about where we would be just after breaking ground in, in uh, the Bonanza, uh, the F-33C. I'm going to assume a total catastrophic engine loss with no oil pressure, a windmill and prop at, at relevant altitudes. The VX will be just passing uh, 200 feet, the VY at 800 feet, and the V cruise climb will be at 1,100 feet. Uh, I'm going to fly it like uh, I train and relax the back pressure when I detect the engine failure. The result, this results in a very fast reaction time, better than the standard 
uh, startle factor three to five second lapse rate. Uh, I train installs quite frequently and feel that this is a natural reaction for me. I'm tuned to it. Uh, maybe you, don't, you can't, shouldn't practice this at home without, maybe you should practice it at home. It gives me a sub-second uh, reaction time. I'll start a turn and target best glide speed, but I'm going to look out the window and not check my instruments. I'm interested in seeing the variations of parameters, what I hit and, you know, do I hit them? Uh, I expect variations and, you know, I may be a smart ass, but I'm not perfect. In all cases today, I'm gonna raise the gear at 100 feet and start accelerating towards my test point climb speed. For engine cuts, I'll back off the turn back, uh, I'll knock off the turn back, sorry, at 100 feet AGL or 180 degrees of turn. Let's see what our energy state is at each one of those and see if we can get a handle on what the best takeoff profile might really be, uh, energy wise. Energy gives you options, remember. As I said, the biggest question here is energy lost. And, with, uh, and that is the big kahuna for this test flight and I'm hoping we can get it and see it. There's other cooler things, uh, cool things that I want to get to, but uh, not for today. Let's talk about this equation and the prediction it makes about energy. Don't forget energy is a requirement for options. Options are what keeps us alive. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I like to keep my options open. Okay, so this is the equation here and we're gonna run through the der what I'm gonna do here. So energy total is equal to uh, mv squared divided by 2 times uh, mass times g and height. Okay, so that's kinetic and this is potential. Potential energy is mgh. And you notice this is the critical point in my view is that's linear. H is linear. The potential energy is linear, linear and the kinetic energy is, goes by the square of the velocity. That's huge. Okay. So I'll do an algebra thing here just to make it easier. Uh, so I, if I divide everything out by the mass, I get rid of the mass and it's not part of this equation. It's not actually energy, but it's a part of it and it makes it easier to deal with and, uh, and approaches easier to do what I want to do. So the equation becomes uh, energy prime. Okay, so it's a little bit different than the original. V squared divided by two plus uh, G times H. Okay, so that's, that's our new equation. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do three speeds, as I mentioned. I'm going to do VX at 77 knots. This is straight out of the POH for the F-33C. VY at 96 knots and V cruise climb at 107 knots. It's in the book. Pretty cool. Altitudes are 100 feet through 1,300 feet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the, equation, the energy equation for each one of those and that will determine uh, what the energy state is at that altitude and then I'm going to Basically, kind of get an average. As I do this, this is my equation again. I'm going to set VY as a baseline. Most people like VY. They think that's the speed to fly. And so I'm going to use it as one. And then we can analyze VX and V cruise climb as a basis of energy uh, related to one, to VY. Okay, see which is more or less. So uh, what the result is, is when you calculate all this out, you'll find is that VX is 84% of baseline. Okay, that means it's 16% less than VY's energy state. V cruise climb is 111% uh, of baseline, which means it's 11% better than baseline. Okay, so that's what conservation of energy is telling us uh, to do here. Uh, another way we can look at it here is, is that VX is 64% uh, of, of the energy of VY, okay, and it's 52% of V cruise climb. In other words, VX is half of the energy that cruise climb gives you. VY is 80% of the energy that cruise, climbs give, cruise climb gives you, okay? So remember we talked about options. Energy is options, so it's looking like V cruise climb is a better speed. And as we go through the test here, the basic questions that I, we're trying to answer is, is time to climb, uh, speeds, uh, that's vertical speed, and the speed loss at cut, okay, which is all dependent on your reaction time. So we're gonna see what my reaction time results in speed loss wise and when I did this test uh, with the three second uh, wait you know pull the engine and wait hold my attitude for three seconds generally the speed loss was 30 knots 30 knots that's not small and uh, <clears throat> and if you remember on the C210 with uh, uh, Brian Vialli uh, he saw that 30 knots as well so he had that startle reaction 
Uh, so we're going to look also at the pitch and climb and the pitch change, okay? This is really important, I think, especially for VX, because you're climbing like a bat out of hell, relatively speaking, whatever your airplane is, and, and then you have an engine failure, so now there's no power. So you're going to have to do a massive uh, pitch change to, make, uh, to stay flying and to get back to some sort of flying uh, speed without stalling the airplane. So once that happens, then I'm interested in the time to turn that 180 degrees and the altitude at the end. Okay, do I have any excess energy, uh, et cetera? And I'm going to look at the energy loss that uh, is a prevailing in each one. Okay, so that's the test. So let's go fly. Okay, here comes the power, 77. That's 100 feet, gear up. That's 200. Yeah, if you just let the nose drop on its own, it's going to be at the near the stall, but then I'm 100 feet above the ground. All right, gear's hanging. This is going to be VY, which is 96 knots, not 77 for as VX. So, but we're going to start at about 75-ish, like it's a regular takeoff. There's full power. Take off, and climb speed, accelerate. It's 140 feet, gear, 96 knots, 3,200 feet, or 500, 800 foot cut, this is an 800 foot cut. There's 96, that's 400, 500 feet, 97, 600, 700, 800. Lost about 10 knots. Hundred feet above when I turn around and I'm nowhere near the field. Alright, this is gonna be a V cruise climb. Start the same gear at hundred feet. Seventy-five, twenty-four, fifty, here we go. Power, we're airborne. Up at 27, 105, 1,000 feet to be 3,400, back around in uh, about 400 feet. Could I make the runway? Yeah, maybe. Okay, we're back uh, from doing the flying and we did the number crunching now. So now we can look and see what the answers to these questions are. First off, we're going to start off with uh, VX results. The time to climb to 237 feet. My plan was 200. Didn't work out quite that uh, precise, but the engine cut, the, the time to climb to 237 feet to the engine cut was six seconds. The average vertical speed in that time was 1,419 uh, feet per minute, and the speed loss at engine cut was seven knots. So pretty fast reaction. It didn't lose that much, but it got pretty close to stall. I'd say within a knot of the stall. The pitch and climb was not in the climb was 19 degrees, and with the pitch required to get the airplane flying again, 
that was uh, 10 degrees on top of that, or 11 degrees actually, so the delta was 30 degrees. That's how much pitch change you needed to have to stay flying. Uh, time to turn? Well, it wasn't an option. Couldn't turn. Uh, I was 10 seconds to 100 feet. That's with that little bit of a ballistic, and because you're still your vector's still up, so you're up here and you're losing speed, and now you're getting the nose down and you're descending. Okay, so uh, it took 10 seconds from basically the engine cut to 100 feet. The energy loss here is 1,901 feet per minute. Okay, a regular uh, cruise situation with a windmilling prop in a Bonanza, generally the energy loss is 1,500 feet per minute. Okay, so 400 uh, feet per minute more uh, in the VX. And that's just, it was a very short amount of time, so nothing really developed. I didn't have enough time to actually maneuver the airplane at that point. It was just get the airplane, not stall, and then, oop, it's over. So VX uh, is not a viable option. <clears throat> okay, VY results. Here the time to climb was 800 feet. The engine cut was at, and at 800 feet to engine cut, and then the time for that was 49 seconds. The average vertical speed was 995 feet per minute, and the speed loss at engine cut was 11 knots. So still pretty good. Pitch, climb was mu pitch and climb was much better at 10 degrees, and the delta was 21. So it was another 11 degrees pitch over. Uh, time to turn was uh, for 180 degrees was 27 seconds. And I ended up at 200 AGL at that point. The average bank was 31 degrees and the peak was 40. Those are my variations. I'm looking out the window trying to hit my numbers, but I'm not looking inside uh, trying not to to figure out what's going on. The energy loss here is the kicker. It's a real interesting one. The energy loss is 2,027 uh, feet per minute. That's a lot. That's, and that's descent rate that you're going to have to arrest before you can land that plane uh, and not hurt yourself. All right. That's a 35% energy loss, 35%. Uh, from the standard of 1,500 feet per minute. That's significant. Now for uh, the v uh, velocity cruise climb results, and again, that's 107 knots. Time to climb was 1,100 feet to engine cut, and that was 65 seconds. So um, I'm going to do another video about uh, that really digs a bit deeper in the speed to, uh, speed to fly for a climb, and we'll be able to compare cruise climb and its performance uh, to match VY both in the, in the climb to 800 feet and then the turn back as well. <clears throat> see, how, see what the results are, what the differences are. The average vertical speed was 918 feet per minute, and the speed loss at engine cut was seven knots. Very consistent, I like that. Pitch and climb was nine degrees, the delta is 20. So it took another 11 degrees uh, negative, you know, nose low to be able to get that wing flying again, which I think is interesting. Uh, but the pitch was only nine degrees. Okay, so a little bit faster. The normal pitch rate in a Bonanza is about seven degrees. So that may be because I have a 550 in the airplane. Time to turn was 180 degrees, 23 seconds. And I ended up with 450 AG, feet AGL to work with. That's a pretty good amount of energy here. Is That's almost 500 feet, and I really haven't lost a lot of speed, and I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. The average bank was 34 degrees, and the peak was 44. Again, this is looking out the window, not looking at the instruments. The energy loss here was 1,591 feet per minute. And again, that's based compared to a 1,500 feet per minute. And that, uh, that is about 6% more, 6% energy loss. Okay, so now we know uh, a, little about, a little bit more about energy and how much we lose in the turn, what that energy loss is. What I want to do now is I want to look at an F-33A that had an engine failure about 400 feet AGL on takeoff from Fairbanks in Alaska. Now about... 10, nine, 10 years ago. This video is from the owner pilot, Dale Haman, uh, who, by the way, I think did a fantastic job with very little energy. And what I want you to watch in particular is what the landing spot looks like through the windshield, okay? You can see from the pilot's perspective what is possible here. And for a long time, it looks like you're, you're gonna land in, in the river, frankly. So um, it's very, very good. And given the climb rate, and the position and altitude at the engine failure, I would estimate that the airplane was accelerating towards VY when the engine failed. And Dale ended up making about a 90 degree turn, and it looks like ground contact was in the 1,000 to 1,500 feet per minute range, probably closer to 1,500 feet. Pretty, uh, broke the engine mounts, pretty severely damaged the wings, they separated from the airplane, et cetera. So let's look at the video.
I am going to do another di video to dig into the speed to fly on takeoff and climb out and what to do about drag, okay, the gear issue. When to, when to raise the gear. Okay, we'll look at that one. For this one, the important thing to realize is the energy loss and they actually see it out the window. Okay, know how much you're going to lose in the turn instead of just wagging it. Dale Haman and the F-33A and Brian the Alley and the C-210 into trees are perfect examples that your brain can do the calculus required to compute what is possible here. Okay, you don't even have to know the math but you had to be prepared for the failure in the first place. And then you see it out the window and you fly the airplane to match, okay? To paraphrase a quote from a favorite movie of mine, fat, dumb, and happy is no way to survive life. Also, a saying we had in the Air Force was, you fight like you train. I think both apply here in this kind of situation, the, the engine out failure after takeoff. I'll leave links below in the description below to the videos I mentioned today, so if you want to take a look at them and, uh, and see, maybe I need to do a playlist for all these impossible turn videos. And stand by for the next two videos uh, about the results of the, the other results of this flight test. I think it's a lot of fun. We can learn something. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. It looks a bit like this here. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters here as well. Uh, thank you. Without your help, I couldn't do these videos. And I'll leave a link below if you'd like to support the Flywire channel on Patreon and see restricted content. It's only on, on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Flywire.